As you progress as a VFX artist, at some point you'll probably work with log or raw footage. This footage looks flat out of the camera, which leads to high quality cinematic images. The cameras that can shoot this type of footage keep getting more affordable and more popular. So how do we add VFX into flat log or raw footage? The answer is ACES. ACES is a free color management pipeline. Now what that means will make more sense as we go on. But basically, ACES enables artists to easily incorporate VFX into high quality log and raw footage. ACES is quickly becoming the industry standard workflow. It's being adopted not only by big studios, but also independent artists like you and me. And it's for all these reasons and more that I think you should learn ACES. One of the main things ACES does is handle the color gamut and gamma of our footage. In this video, we'll learn all about what this means. In part two, we'll look at the ACES workflow using DaVinci Resolve and Blender. But for now, if you don't understand color gamut and gamma, join me and let's dive in. For this video, I created this poster that goes over these concepts. So make sure to download it and follow along linked in the description. First up, color gamut. We use the term color gamut when talking about color spaces. Now what the heck is a color space? Well, if we look up color space on Google, we'll see most of the images are of this chart. This chart was actually created in 1931, but as you can see, it's still widely used today to visualize color spaces. Let's break this chart down. First, there's this whole color region you see here. This represents all the possible colors that the average human eye can see out in nature. As such, we call this the visible color space, and the boundary of this space is labeled as the gamut of human vision. So we can think of gamut as meaning the total range or boundary of a certain color space. Cameras capture images and video by representing the real world with a subset of colors from a certain color space. Display devices then represent these images using a color space that could be the same or different. These different color spaces used for capturing and displaying images can be mapped onto our diagram with triangles. We use a triangle to mark the color gamut or range of a color space. All the colors inside the triangle gamut are the ones able to be captured or displayed. So how does all of this apply to ACES? Well, part of ACES includes the main ACES color space, which is called ACES 2065-1. And as you can see, the gamut of this color space encompasses the entire visible spectrum of light. This is why ACES is so powerful. Remember when I said that ACES is able to handle the color gamut of whatever footage we throw at it? Well, here's what I mean. Because the ACES color gamut is so huge, ACES is able to use footage filmed in a variety of smaller gamuts and transform that footage into the ACES color space. And this is super helpful for artists because we can just focus on doing VFX in ACES and never again have to worry about what type of footage we're handed. Now, it's not exactly that simple, but it is really nice. So now we understand color gamut, which mainly deals with color and describing a certain range of colors. If gamut describes color, gamma we can think of as having to do with brightness and luminance. Let's look at a different graph to understand. Now, don't freak out, you've seen this type of graph before with RGB curves. Our x-axis will represent luminance input level. So zero on the x-axis means complete black and one means complete white. The y-axis will represent the output values. Let's draw a straight line represented by the function y equals x. Now gamma is actually just a value, and this value is taken as the exponent of our input. This gamma value is part of what is called a gamma transfer function. If we set the gamma value to one, then our line here stays the same. Our input luminance values are not changed by the gamma function. This is called a linear gamma, or more specifically, a linear transfer function. With a linear transfer function, if we add two luminance inputs, say 0.25 plus 0.25, we get an expected output of 0.5, two times as luminous. The math works as expected. If we set the gamma value to 0.5 or 1.5, we'll see that our line becomes a curve. This is what we call a nonlinear gamma curve or nonlinear transfer function. We can see that if we have an input of 0.25, we get 0.5 on output. If we then add 0.25, we get 0.7. So math from input to output with nonlinear transfer functions is a little weird. Now in nature, in the real world, light waves interact in a linear relationship. 
If you double the luminance input of a light source, we get double the output. Blender, in most 3D software, is set up to use linear calculations by default when rendering and compositing. Let me show you why this is helpful. We have a scene here with two lights on either side of the cube and the world shader set to black. I can render the scene with both lights on and get this image. Or I can render an image with just one light on and a second image with the other light on. And if I add these two images together in compositing, you'll see it looks exactly like the image with both lights on. The reason this math works so well is because we're using linear light calculations, which again is how light works in the real world. This is also why multi-pass compositing is possible, which is the technique I've shown in other videos. So now let's talk about humans. Our eyes perceive brightness from the world around us non-linearly. Let me provide an example to explain this. Say you're in a completely dark room and then you light a candle. Your eyes perceive a big change in brightness. But if we're in a bright environment and we light the candle, our eyes see very little change to the brightness of the environment, even though the change in luminance, the candle, is the same. As you can see, our eyes are more sensitive to changes in brightness of darker shades. So we say that our eyes perceive brightness non-linearly. Now let's talk about cameras and gamma. There are two different methods for how cameras store the linear light information from the real world, display referred and scene referred. Cameras like your phone or a basic DSLR store light values using the display referred method. To have smaller file sizes, these devices record less light information from the scene. The information that is collected has a non-linear transfer function applied. This optimizes the image, brightening the dark shades, where our eyes are most sensitive. Higher-end cameras that shoot raw video are able to store light information with the scene-referred method. These cameras record more light information and therefore are able to store the raw, linear light information from the scene, unmodified. This creates much larger files to store all these light values. Also in the scene referred category is log footage. With log footage, the linear light values from the scene have a special log transfer function applied to them. While log footage does not capture the exact scene like RAW, log stores enough light information where we can use ACES to reverse engineer what the original light values were. The benefit of log is smaller file sizes than RAW, while retaining more light information than display referred formats. To summarize, display referred footage discards a lot of the original light information, optimizing and storing only what's needed for display. Scene referred footage more accurately represents the scene and what the original real light values were. Scene referred raw and log footage leads to more accurate VFX compositing because of the extra light information that is captured. Next up, gamma and displays. All display devices, from a computer monitor to a movie theater projector, display images with a certain gamma function applied to them. Say we're putting some display referred footage on a computer screen. The screen displays all images with a default non-linear gamma curve applied. Combined with the gamma originally applied by the camera, our image now appears normal. Our optimized display referred image is gamma corrected to look normal. This is why log and raw footage often looks flat since the default computer screen gamma does not pair correctly with the gamma of the footage. Finally, how does gamma apply to ACES? Well, ACES 2065 is a linear color space. This means we work with linear luminance values that reflect the real world. This is convenient for us VFX artists since we already work in linear color spaces for accurate rendering and compositing. The cool thing about ACES is that it can take either display referred or scene referred footage and convert it to be represented in the ACES linear color space. As artists, this means that we can just focus on doing VFX in ACES and theoretically never have to worry about the gamma of the footage that we're using, which is super nice. So there you go, that's the concepts of color gamut and gamma. Now I know those are kind of tricky concepts to grasp onto, uh, but don't worry, in part two, we'll dive into ACES, in DaVinci Resolve, and Blender, and hopefully you'll start to see the big picture of all of this. Before I go, I need to give a big thanks to Mario Casares and Daniel Birka. Those two guys helped me work through a lot of the information I presented in this video, and they also have some fabulous Blender-related resources on ACES, which I'll link in the description. Don't forget to download the free poster for Color Gamut and Gamma, and other than that, I'll see you in part two.